Okay, so first I want to say I'm Elizabeth. I am the manager of adult and teen services here at the Weathersfield Library. Um, I handle programming um, and any of the uh, services that you expect to find when you come to the reference desk. Um, so please do come in and see us. I also want to mention that as part of your registration or maybe shortly thereafter, you would have received these four handouts. Um, they are worksheets, um, op, uh, sports options, common tech terms, and summary of steps to cut the cord. If you don't have a printer and you want to print them, please come into the library. We're happy to print them for you. But I made these handouts for you so that you don't have to take notes furiously and um, all of the notes. And basically, it's a summary of the presentation for you there. So check your email. So this is the agenda for the presentation tonight. We're gonna to talk about what is cord cutting, selecting internet service, streaming services, devices, different scenarios of different combinations of services and devices, phone service options, and additional resources. So first, what is cord cutting? Cord cutting is getting rid of your expensive cable service and accessing TV and movies through the internet using streaming subscriptions and devices. What is streaming? Streaming is different from downloading in that you're consuming the data in a continuous flow. You're not saving the file to your hard drive and then accessing it later. Um, you're actually watching it as it streams to your computer or listening to it. Live streaming is internet content delivered in real time as it happens. This is often live television shows like sports events and special one-time live concerts or um, pay-per-view, maybe something like that, but that's live streaming. And it is mostly used for audio and video. How do I stream? So this is the basic, this is the meta um, slide. First, you need wireless internet, so you need internet plus a modem and the router, which makes it wireless. A subscription to a streaming service, which we will go much farther in depth about. A streaming device, which we'll also go in depth about. And a TV with an HDMI port. That's how the device connects to the TV. The pros and cons of cord cutting. So the pros of cord cutting are it's typically cheaper um, which again, we'll discuss um, different scenarios and pricing options a little bit later, because you can pay for only what you want to watch. So for so many years, um, many of us have said, I wish I could get cable a la carte. Why can't I pay just for the channels I watch? Well, this is really the best, the closest that you're going to get to that right now. Um, and so you can save a lot of money doing it this way. Typically has no commercials or fewer and everything is on demand. It's there when you wanna watch it. No more setting um, something to record or, or putting it on your calendar to catch a TV show. And when you're ready to sit down and watch it, you just press play and it's there. The cons of cord cutting is typically less concert than a full uh, content than a full cable package. You must purchase at least one streaming device to watch on the TV. You could, because you could always watch just on a tablet or a laptop if you wanted to, but if you wanna watch it on the TV, you need a streaming device. You could miss out on some content from premium networks like HBO, Showtime, et cetera. And if you watch a lot of TV, it could end up costing the same or more to get the same content. And we will um, discuss a scenario like that later. Selecting internet service. This is going to be your first step, though I suspect that if you're connected here with us tonight, you've already completed this step, but we'll discuss it briefly anyway. So this, um, I have, I've had in the past some questions about how the internet connects. And so this time I've included this graphic just as an explainer. So the internet <clears throat> comes in off the street, depending on which um, variety of internet you choose. It comes into the modem, which turns the data into something that can be interpreted by the computer. Um, and so it can either go straight to a computer by a wire, or it would go to a router, which would make it wireless internet so that a device could connect to it wirelessly. This is the basic setup, no matter if you have DSL, um, cable, or fiber optic, which we'll talk about soon. 
the major providers in the Weathersfield area um, are Front Frontier DSL. This is the cheapest one, um, but you it would require more expensive plans for quality streaming. It has average speeds and it comes into the house over the phone line. There's Cox Cable Internet. The prices range from $30 to $100 a month. It's faster than Frontier DSL, and it comes into the house on a coaxial cable. I suspect that most of you connecting today have one of these two. Um, or if you're coming from another town, you might have Comcast. Comcast is comparable to Cox, very, very similar service and price points. And if you are in Weathersfield, parts of Rocky Hill, parts of Newington and New Britain, you now may have the option of go net speed fiber optic. You have won the internet lottery. Um, this is a fantastic low cost service that's coming in um, to your area. I say low cost, low cost relative to the, um, the amount of internet you're getting. It's incredibly lightning fast internet for 50 to $90 a month. And it comes into the house over fiber optic cable. This is probably not even a dream in the mind of the town, the rural town that I live in. Um, and I'm very jealous that you will soon have access to this. Um, if you want to find out if it's available in your street, I recommend go, um, go net speed their website. I think it's gonetspeed.com. Um, and you can see if it comes to your street or not. So not all of these towns are covered by this service. So selecting internet service, the average price per speed, it varies by pro provider and by promotions, um, like I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> so you can see the spread here. If you add up all your devices that you wanna uh, use with the internet, you can determine how many megabits per second you might need. But just as a little idea, HD streaming needs five to seven megabits per a second per device and 4k streaming needs a lot more 25 to 30 megabits per second per device and the way i think about let me go back to this the way i think about um the bandwidth or the or the megabits per second i think about it as like water pressure or hot water coming into your house um if you have one sink go in your washing dishes, it's going to be hot, it's going to be high pressure. If you've got someone washing the car, doing dishes, washing laundry, someone taking a shower, everyone's going to get a little bit of water, some of it may not be so hot. So you want to think about having enough of that water pressure or enough of the hot water um, to be able to get all of your devices, um, or else you'll see some slowdowns, some skipping, you may not even be able to start videos on some of them. Um, but you want to think about the tablets you have in your house, the phone, the TV, um, if you stream music at our house, we stream music constantly in the kitchen. Um, so if you have um, security cameras that are running on Wi-Fi, you want to add up every single device so that you know exactly how much you want. Okay, so before we start streaming services, does anybody have any questions on the just the first quick part? I have a question. Um, for when it costs like, um, like, um, for the for when you like stream like uh, like TV core coding service such as Pluto TV and you said they don't have much of the content like you do on regular TV. Mm -hmm. I I would just I normally like stick to Netflix, Disney Plus, Crunchyroll, and HBO Max mostly because because I just like watch movies and just watch TV like just like series exclusives on there mm -hmm. rather than just a normal what's streamed on the streamed on food tv unless it's like exclusive theirs i would just go there and walk on there and watch it yeah that, that sounds would, like a good plan yeah yeah it is and um and for the the fiber for the fiber optic services i if if you guys haven't heard there's there's a fiber optic service by Google called Google Fiber, where it, where it like has like megabits, megabits per second. That's twice as fast as the ones that are on, on the form of the PowerPoint. Yeah, it's not available everywhere though. Yeah, yeah. It 
yeah, it's like slow going. It's only available like Kansas, Utah. Right, right. So that's why I didn't include it on this um, presentation. And last I heard, um, I thought they were actually ceasing um, installing it around the country, but that is something I'll have to look into. I knew we weren't getting it here anytime soon. So yeah, it's but will we? an exciting technology though. But will we get here? I don't think so. Not anytime soon. Oh. The Go Net Speed is going to be your best bet it's incredibly fast internet for for really great pricing all right yeah okay okay thanks you're welcome okay carrie is there any questions in the chat there are no current questions in the chat okay all right, so streaming services. These are what you will subscribe to to get your content on your devices. Um, this is the section of the presentation that is getting almost too enormous <laughs> to, to list everything. Um, so this is not an exhaustive list of what is out there. This is um, the biggest names and the ones that are going to host most of the content that you're looking for, but it is certainly not exhaustive and new ones are coming out all the time. But um, so please, if you have questions about this one, you can put it in the chat and we can talk about it at the end. All right. So Netflix, this is the one you've definitely heard of. This is was one of the original streaming services. Um, they still have kept their prices pretty low, nine to $18 per month. Um, most of these plans, when they have a range of prices, it depends on how many people, how many shows you wanna be able to watch at one time. So if somebody in the den watching one show on the Netflix account and somebody's up in the bedroom watching another show on the same Netflix account, you can pay for different numbers of views at the same time you can pay for different quality streaming so 4k versus hd so you just have to look at the account details you can have a one month free trial watch tv shows movies and exclusives you can download some content to view offline via the app this is one thing i love about netflix and is really unique i think some of the other ones are starting to offer it um, but you can download some of the content to a device you can't do it to computer only to a phone app or a tablet app and you can watch it later so if you're going to be on an airplane or um, maybe um, camping or in a car trip or somewhere where you won't have the internet to stream you can download to watch later and that's cool um, and again hd and 4k content depending on the subscription Hulu is another one of the first streaming services. They have $7 a month or $13 a month for fewer commercials with options for premium add-ons for additional cost. Most of these services have premium add-on options. Um, you can cancel them at any time, but there's a current promo of $13. $13 a month, I think it might be $14 a month for Disney Plus, Hulu and ESPN Plus all bundled together for one price. And if you want all three of those, that's a pretty good deal. You can have a one month free trial. They have TV shows, movies and exclusive content. All of these streaming services are now creating their own movies and TV, of course, because they have to differentiate themselves from each other. They, they have to create a reason why you wanna to subscribe to them. In the meantime, they're all creating really cool stuff. So um, it's just a matter of deciding which one has the content you think is what you want the most. This one has HD and 4K content. They also have a Hulu Live option for $65 a month where you can stream top live and on-demand TV channels, including sports, news, and entertainment. And you can have cloud storage. This live uh, option. There's a handful of streaming services that offer it and it, the price just keeps going up and up and up when I it, so quickly I, I have to change the price every single time I do the presentation. Um, I think when I started doing it, it was 35 a month and then it's gone up in increments of five and $10 a month, I think every time. So something to keep an eye on. <clears throat> Amazon Prime Instant Video. Did you know that this is already included in that Prime um, account that you probably already have? Um, I, I include this because so many people do already have Amazon Prime. This is not one that I recommend you subscribe to just for the streaming services. I would say their catalog is 
mediocre. Um, I, very rarely do I find things that I want to watch on there. And often when I do, I still have to pay extra for it. And that just frustrates me. So if you're going to get Amazon Prime, do it for the shipping and the other perks of Prime, but not for this video service. If you already have it, great. Make use of it if you can. Um, they do have HD and 4K content. So check it out. <clears throat> HBO Max. So HBO has gone through a couple different iterations of itself trying to figure out what its branding is for its streaming service. Um, HBO Max is what it's currently called. They have a free seven day trial. You can have a 10 or $15 a month plan depending on um, the different options you want. You can cancel at any time. So you'll notice that all of the streaming services that I talk about, you can cancel at any time. And that's really nice. There's no contracts. So let's say you want uh, to watch, you have a favorite show on HBO. Well, you can, you can subscribe to HBO Max just for those 12 weeks that that season is on or how, whatever the duration of your show is and then cancel when it's done. There's no issue. I do this all the time with Stars Network because I have there's a show I really like on there, but I don't watch anything else on Stars, So it saves me money to do it that way. Um, so HBO has, of course, their own content plus series and movies that they've purchased. They also have worked out a deal that Warner Brothers Studios releases simultaneous with movie theaters at the $15 plan. So if you really love Warner Brothers Studios movies, this might be a great plan for you. And they have HD content. All right, so Sling is a little bit different than the others because it creates more of a cable TV experience. They have two different packages. They have a blue package and an orange package. One leans more sports heavy. One is more drama and TV channel um, <clears throat> options or the package, the combined package for $50. The, um, I, I don't use Sling myself, but when I experimented with it for the purpose of this um, program, I really liked that it had a TV guide like homepage where you could scroll through all the different shows and you could um, select some of the live things. Um, it, it made for, if you miss that cable TV experience, this is a great option for you. Um, and they also may have your local Fox and NBC stations available, depending on um, your, your um, market. Philo is very similar to Sling. It is the stripped down version of Spring. It's much cheaper at $25 a month for 60 plus channels. You can always add premium, premium channel add-ons, but it is a lot cheaper. You can have a seven day free trial unlimited recording on a, a cloud um, DVR. And, and like I said, more of a bare bones cable TV experience. YouTube TV, this one really has a lot of incredible options. It's $65 a month. Again, I mentioned not that long ago, they came to the market, they were $35 a month and has quickly shot up, but they also keep offering more and more channels. I think when we started, it was like 45 channels, but now it's so, so many, including ABC, CBS, Fox, ESPN, NFL, NBA, MLB, etc. They have HD content and uniquely they have up to six users. Everyone gets their own login. So um, everyone in your household can have their own login. They can save their own shows to their own DVR account. Um, it's really a great option if you're a bigger family and you have a lot of TV watching needs. <clears throat> Disney Plus, this is one of the newer ones. This came to the market two falls ago, I want to say. It's $7 a month or $70 a year. Or they have that current bundle promo with ESPN Plus and Hulu for $14 a month. Here it is with the correct dollar amount. Sorry about that. Um, they feature nine ex exclusive episodic shows with much more on the way. And they have around 500 films from the Disney Library, as well as around 7,000 episodes of Disney TV 
in a 13 film signature collection that includes classics. And of course, they own the whole Star Wars um, franchise now. So um, if you want to watch that stuff in the Marvel, this is where you want to be. When I tested this out, I was a little disappointed at the National Geographic um, channel that they have. I just didn't think there was a great selection on there. And to be honest, I'm not too interested in all the other stuff personally, but um, if you are a Disney lover or if you have kids who like to watch Disney movies, this is really a great option. <clears throat> and Peacock. Peacock is NBC's um, new streaming service. NBC um, was experiencing um, great popularity. Their show, The Office, was the most viewed TV show on Netflix for many years, and they decided, why let Netflix get all of that when we can create a streaming service of our own? So they came up with Peacock. They do have a free version, limited episodes, so you might have the first two or three episodes in a season. Um, you'll watch ads and, again, limited content. $50 a year, all content and episodes, live sports, but with ads, and $100 a year, all content you have access to all the content ad free. They only have NBC Universal owned content. So that's their late night talk shows, 30 Rock Cheers, Saturday Night Live. And let me tell you, they have Saturday Night Live all the way back to the very first season. I'm a huge SNL fan. That was the first thing I checked when I got Peacock. Um, Parks and Recreation and The Office, they also are having new exclusive reboots of old shows and many movies. They're offering all kinds of stuff. Um, I actually got, um, I'm a Comcast customer and um, Comcast owns NBC, if I'm thinking of the hierarchy correctly. Um, and so they offered it to me for free, their streaming box and their streaming service to check out. And that's the only reason I have it. Would I pay for this one? I'm not so sure, but um, I do enjoy having it for, um, for free. But if you, if you are a huge fan of NBC content, this is the way to go. And of course the Olympics, of course they feature the Olympics, which is really a draw for people myself included. When they first came out, they had limited device support, but they're adding many as they go. So um, if you have a certain streaming device and you're interested in Peacock, you might wanna just check out on their website which devices they support. I personally use an Amazon Fire TV stick, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And when Peacock first came out, I could not watch it on there. So that's why I mention it. Apple TV, so this um, is Apple TV Plus, it's called. They have a free seven day trial and then it's only $5 a month afterwards. This is really a niche, a niche product. Um, they have a limited number of unique shows, but they are adding more. Apple, I believe, has more money than God. So they are going to continue producing and recording um, their own TV shows to add that you'll only be able to see um, on this service. So big name shows that they currently have are The, Mo uh, the Morning Show, it's called, For All Mankind, Dickinson, Ted Lasso, you might have heard um, some promotion around and Oprah programming. Oprah has a lot of her stuff on Apple TV Plus. Paramount Plus. So this was formerly CBS All Access. You may have heard it referred to as that. It's they have also have a free seven day trial. It's five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year for the basic plan, or ten dollars a month or a hundred dollars a year for the premium plan, which is no commercials plus your local CBS station a big catalog of all Paramount content, including CBS shows. They have Nickelodeon, MTV, um, CBS, and many, many movies that they own. <clears throat> and the CPTV Passport, they get the award for the most confusing website as I tried to research um, about how much it costs. They really, they, they have a suggested donation of $5 or more, just like when they do the the, um, <clears throat> the fundraising um, on PBS, um, it's a suggested donation. It's a, it's a pretty good app, I have to say, but I think their website has a, leaves a lot to be desired. You can stream 4,000 or more PBS and CPTV shows on demand, and it is available for multiple platforms and devices. 
So now we're getting into the streaming services where you pay per view, so pay per item. So you can rent or purchase your content and the cost varies from $1.99 and up. That would be for renting, that would not be for purchasing. So services like Voodoo and Apple, um, the iTunes, the little shopping bag one you see in the green, that's Microsoft Store. Google Play and Amazon. So this does happen sometimes where even if you subscribe to several streaming services and there's a certain movie or a certain TV show you want to watch, well, none of them own it. The only place you can get it is paying per episode or per movie. You might spend $4.99 to rent a movie for 24 or 48 hours. These are the platforms you're going to go to. Um, think of it as like the red box, but digitally. You don't have to actually physically get um, get the disc. There is AD, uh, HD and 4K when available. Okay. Um, and most major networks now have apps that will allow you to view their content. Some it started that they were free and now they realize how much money they can make off of it. So almost all of them you have to pay for in some shape or form. Um, so if you have a favorite network, um, check it out and see if they have an app. <clears throat> and of course, streaming via the library. If you have a library card, um, you have access to several services that you can stream things through. Um, we, all three of our libraries, so uh, Newington, Weathersfield, and Berlin offer Overdrive and Hoopla. And if you're missing your Acorn TV, like we are so much, um, Coopla actually now offers a lot of Acorn TV's content. So you can sign in there and look for whatever titles you're looking for. Again, I'll warn you, it's not all of the Acorn TV content, but quite a bit of it. Unfortunately, the borrowing, um, the structure of the borrowing is a little bit different. With Acorn TV, you could check out a seven day pass and watch however much you wanted to in those seven days. Unfortunately on Hoopla, each video or each title that you watch counts towards your number of borrows for the month. So it's a little bit different, unfortunately, but at least it's available. And I also wanna mention that Berlin Peck um, has the BBC Literary Adapt adaptations in video on their website. You have to be a Berlin Peck um, patron with a Berlin Peck library card, but I do want to make sure that, that um, you know that that's available to you Berlin patrons. Um, so through these services, you can watch documentaries, movies, and TV. There's some HD content, but don't expect really great things. I would mostly um, expect standard um, definition, and you can watch on any device. Now, other free streaming services, there's Crackle and Tubi are the biggest name ones. They're completely free to stream, but limited in content includes commercials. They do have movies and TV. Um, there is some HD content on Tubi, but I think Crackle is completely standard definition. Um, they're not great options, but hey, um, if there's something you wanna watch or even just wanna have something on in the background and you don't wanna spend money on it, these are great options too local channels. So this was something I started getting a lot of questions about, so I included it. Um, so as we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, some of the paid streaming services do offer access to local channels like CBS or NBC. Um, so YouTube TV, Hulu Live, and Fubo TV, which is on your sports handout, which I'll mention briefly in a little while. But yeah, an antenna may be the best bet for local networks, an antenna on your roof. Um, for Weathersfield, WCTV Channel 14 streams live on their website, and WGTV Channel 16 streams live on their YouTube channel. That's local community channel and um, town council. Nutmeg TV shows town council meetings and other events on their website for Avon, Berlin, Bristol, Burlington, Canton, Farmington, New Britain, and Plainville. And Newington Town Council meetings can be streamed on YouTube. Okay, before we get on to devices, is there any questions in the chat? Yes. Okay. There are some. Okay. Um, the first one is if I have an external antenna for network stations, can I set up a DVR to record programs to watch at a later date? 
I don't think so. Um, I am not familiar with the actual physical DVR. I've actually never had one, um, but usually um, the cable TV streams right to the DVR. And so I think it's solely for um, cable, but that would be something you would have to ask wherever you got your DVR from. So maybe Comcast or Cox, but that's a question for them because I, I don't know the answer. The next question is, when the prices go up for a streaming service, is it only for new subscribers or does it go up for everybody? Are you able to lock in a price? It depends. That's going to vary based on the, the streaming service provider. Sometimes they up the price for only new ones and they'll send out publicity saying, you're grandfathered in, you get to keep your price. And then sometimes they realize they can't continue to provide awesome content when, on $4 a month or, or whatever and, and are raising everyone's prices. Right now we are seeing everyone's prices go up. Um, I would say this is the first time I've updated a lot of the streaming services prices when I've updated my presentation. And any of the ones that I updated were by a dollar or two per month, but um, I do believe it would it's for everybody this time around but I think it's situation specific. Um, someone else had asked about um, how they missed ACORN, but then you answered that. Question. Okay, that. we miss ACORN uh, so much. <laughs> we do. <work. laughs> I know, everybody really does. Yeah. <laughs> it was very heavily used. Yeah. Um, okay, the next last question I see is, how would you access SNY to watch UK UConn women's games? That's a really good question. And I will have to look into that. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, but you're probably not the only one who has that question. Um, I, I actually got a question. Okay. Um, how much is Hoopla, Hoopla free? Yep, Hoopla is free. So that's a, that's a um, app that we offer through the library. Um, you would access it with your library card. And I'm not sure how many checkouts um, you get through Newington and Berlin, they can chime in. But if you're a Weathersfield patron, you get 10 checkouts per month. So that's if you watch 10 videos, that's it. Or if you, you know, you can check out one book and then have nine videos or however many, but you get 10 per month. All right. Because Berlin is seven. There, Berlin is seven. All right. Because I, there's a, my local library here in New Haven mm. offers Hoopla as well. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So they, um, so just check with them to see how many checkouts you have, or it may tell you when you log in with your library card. Um, but they, we all subscribe to the exact same Hoopla. So our catalog isn't different from their catalog. Um, so you should be able to access Acorn TV through them. All right. And can I download it on my phone or? the app, but not the content. The content is streamed. Okay. So I can download the app Hoopla. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. One last question is somebody asked about, do you know about Tableau DBR, T-A-B-L-O? No, I don't know about that one. Yeah, I don't know. I can look into it and follow up. That's it. Okay. All right, so we will start on devices. So like I mentioned earlier, you can always just stream on a tablet, a smartphone, a laptop or a Chromebook. You don't have to stream to your television. We have one TV in my house. Sometimes when my husband's watching something, I'll just watch something on my laptop or my phone or whatever. It's, it, there's no rule saying you have to watch TV on your, on your TV. Um, so that would be the cheapest way to go, but we will just, discuss how to get these stream, the stream content onto your TV. So your first option, if you have a smart TV, you're all set. This is not something I recommend that you run out and buy necessarily, only because we're going to be discussing so many things in the 20 to $50 range that are regularly updated. And so it's a cheap outlay of money in the beginning if you buy a $25 or $30 device and then you wanna upgrade it in three years to the, the new and improved $30 device versus a smart TV, which you're paying $250 or more to upgrade. I just, I don't recommend it as a way to get into streaming, but if you already have one, then that's, that's really great. 
You want to make sure the device supports the apps that you want, although at this point in the game, you would be hard pressed to find one that doesn't. So the first ones we're going to talk about is the Roku um, family of devices. They keep changing what they call them and they keep changing <laughs> the pricing, um, but this is a very simple, easy to use device in any form. Um, and one that I highly recommend, I have the Roku Express. I bought it just to experiment with it for this program. Um, and again, it is easy to set up, easy to use. Um, so the Roku Express and the Roku Express 4K, they look like the stick that's on the right hand side here. This is the, um, the purple dongle or stick um, that has an HDMI plug on it that plugs right into the back of your TV. And that is a little wireless um, um, receiver, I guess, that it, uh, um, connects to your Wi-Fi. And that's how you get the content from the internet onto your TV. Um, um, the other side, that little box, that's the Roku Ultra. Um, it's a little black box that sits on your TV stand. Um, the only thing different it really to me is it has, um, it's an HDR and 4K and it has audio options. I think for most people's purposes, one of the sticks is fine and you can read through the, the differences between them to decide which, but this is just a really easy, inexpensive way to get into streaming. And it's completely independent from any of the streaming services. And so um, you're not tied into anything, which is, which is really nice. So Amazon um, works very similarly. You can see the two sticks there um, that plug right into the TV over HDMI. Um, they work very similarly. The only thing is you're in Amazon's ecosystem. If you love Amazon, if you have Amazon Prime already, this is a great way to do that. Um, the Amazon Fire Stick HD is what I have actually, and I find it very easy to use. These will no doubt be much cheaper than the prices you see here over the next week or two for Black Friday. And it may be a great way for 18 bucks or whatever these go down to, um, a great way to dip your toes into some streaming services. The Apple TV. So Apple no doubt makes beautiful, um, very elegant looking products. And if you are deep into the Apple ecosystem, you've got an iPad and an I, a MacBook and um, all the other things, You, this may make sense to add to your ecosystem because you can access anything that you have saved. Um, but if you're going to just start streaming, this is not the way to go. These are expensive. You can see the prices there. Um, they're expensive, though easy to use, um, but just not one I really recommend for a beginner. And the Chromecast. So the Chromecast works a little bit differently. You can see on the left-hand side, that's a dongle that you plug into your TV via the HDMI port. And then whatever you want to view, you have to open in either a browser or an app that supports the streaming to the, you cast it to the TV, it's called. Um, so it's a little bit different in that you don't use the dongle or the device itself. You have to either have a smartphone, a tablet, or a laptop that you're opening the content on and then sending to the TV. Once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to use and you can use pretty much anywhere that has a co um, connection to the internet. The other option is a Chromecast with Google TV. So this is a Chromecast that also has its own interface like the other ones, like the other devices that we're talking about. You can scroll through the different apps and the different TV shows um, versus the, the plain Chromecast where you just send one show over the airwaves to the TV. This is a brand new option. I have not yet been able to um, play with it. Um, I do understand though that you have to log in with your Gmail and connect everything with your Gmail. So it may be a little bit more information that you want than you want to be handing over to the company. But again, if you're all into the Google ecosystem, it may be a great option for you. I like how sleek the device looks as well. 
So HD antenna is another option um, to get your local channels. You can expect 20 to 50, of course, depending on the topography of where you live, what part of the state you live. Um, so you can spend as little as $12 up to 150. I'm sure much more than that. Um, my father has an antenna like the one on the right, all the little bars there that he bought for $35 and he gets a great range of stations. I spent $70 on something that looks like the thing on the left and it did not work, so I returned it. Um, so, you know, look around for antennas. Walmart now has a selection of them and I think Target does. Um, so it's, it's something to consider. Okay, is there any questions about devices? Um, if you could type them into the chat, please. Um, can I still speak with my mic? Yep. All right. Yeah. In, uh, uh, to, in case you didn't know, um, you can also stream like like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus through gaming consoles such as the PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, yeah, PlayStation yep. Five. That is true. I actually used to have a section on that, um, but so few people were using that that I didn't recommend that people run out to get a $400 gaming console to stream, um, you know, to, to stream the content. So I did used to include it. And, and you're right, it is um, for people who already have something like that in the house. It's a great option. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, just in case like they... Just in, just in case like uh yeah. they don't like they don't like have a they don't like have a, a streaming device yep. or like yep. mostly like game or on their PlayStation 5, PlayStation 5 or Nintendo Switch they they they'll just normally turn it turn to that for like movies and such yeah yep if you already have it in the house it's a great way to stream yep thank you yep. you're welcome Okay, um, one question is what is um, HDR? Um, HDR is high, oh boy, of course. Um, I had it on the tip of my tongue. I can Google it while you're- It's um... a level high dynamic range imaging. So it's enhanced HD TV. Um, the next thing, next question is, do you need a device for each TV? Yes, you need one for each TV, yes. Um, next question is, do all the antennas have to go on the roof? Any good ones that don't? Um, so you're going to get your best reception on the roof or on top of a pole. Um, I cannot speak to, I mean, the, the one that, that I had mentioned that I purchased that didn't work, that it was about the size of an eight and a half, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, the flat panel there. They said to just put that one in your window, um, that it doesn't need to go anywhere. You just, with suction cups, put it on the window. Again, I got virtually no channels with that one. So I found that really frustrating. Um, it's gonna it's gonna depend on what's around you, what trees are around you. Are you on top of a mountain? Are you on the bottom of a mountain? Um, and so that will be up to where you are. Um, um, I do include in one of the handouts, there is um, antennaweb.org is a website you want to check out, has a lot of information about antennas, and I believe also has um, information about um, what channels you can expect to get where you are. Um, so that may help you, that may be a great um, starting place for you to learn more about it. Just the one last comment somebody had is that um, she does have a flat one like, like you had and it does work inside her house. Okay, great. That's, it must work for somebody because they still sell them. <laughs> so um, that's a great space saving one and you don't have to get up on a roof to install it, but it just did not work for me. And I'm on top of a mountain, so I, I feel like I should be getting something up there. So that's all the questions. Let's okay, see. great. Okay, so we will move on to scenarios. So scenarios, this is where we talk about different combinations of subscriptions and um, 
<clears throat> devices and one of them, uh, hopefully they're helpful to you. You might see yourself described in one of the scenarios um, and we'll also see where <clears throat> streaming may not make as much sense either. So example one is a casual sports watcher and basic TV um, HD watcher. So you would have a HD antenna for $35, the Roku Express 4K for $40, and the Sling TV Orange package for $33 a month. Your initial investment is $75 and $35 per month for every year after that. I also wanna mention that, um, of course, this is also in addition to what you're paying for the internet, but you're using the internet for so many other things too. So this is just in addition to that. Example two, a movie lover with a 4K HD TV. The Amazon Fire Stick 4K for $50, Amazon Prime Video for 119 a year, Netflix Premium $18 per month, and HBO Max $15 per month. Your initial investment is $50 for that Fire Stick, and then you pay just under $43 per month every year after that. Example three, a smartphone user who's a casual movie and TV viewer. A Chromecast for $30, Netflix Basic for $9 per month, and Amazon Prime for $119 per year. The initial investment's $30, and after that, just under $19 per month. Example four, this is my personal setup. A casual TV and movie viewer in HD. I have a $60 antenna on top of my house. I have an Amazon Fire Stick that I paid $40 for. I have Netflix Basic for $9 per month, Amazon Prime for $119 per year, and Hulu for $6 per month. My initial investment was $100, but I'm paying less than $25 per month. And I do, like I said before, I do occasionally, for instance, I have something that I really like on Stars. So when the new season comes out, I subscribe for three months or however long the season is, and then I cancel again. So you can add another $9 per month for three months or something like that. So that's, it's totally possible to do that. Example five. So this is the avid TV watcher. This is where we see where it might be prohibitively expensive or you might not be saving any money at all over a, a cable package. You have a Roku Express 4K for $40, a Sling TV orange and blue plus premium channels. So you're getting up to $64 or more a month. Netflix standard at $9 a month and HBO Max $15 a month. Your initial investment's only $40, but then you're getting upwards of $90 or more a month and you're not even getting phone service. So you're not, it's not even a bundled package anymore. Um, so this, if you really love TV and you love having access to all the channels and all the content, then, then this may not be right for you. Um, that's for you to look into and to weigh. So example six is a sports fan. This is another scenario where it may not be the best. Um, Roku Premiere at $40 a month, uh, $40 for the device. YouTube TV for $60 a month, $65 a month. ESPN Plus for $5 a month. Did I? That's actually $7 a month now. MLB.TV at $60 a year. Um, and actually, as you can see there, it's now $130 a year. So these keep going up and also depending on when you subscribe, if you subscribe halfway into the year, they cut the rate, oh, honestly, keeping up with these prices. <laughs> um, so your inve initial investment is $40. And then after that, it can be $75, $100 and upwards a month. Um, you can um, check out on the best streaming options for sports, which I have updated. Um, this will show you some of your best options if you are a sports fan. Um, and this, <clears throat> again, you may want to keep a cable package for that. It's up to you. It's all about the, the math that makes sense. Okay, any questions about that, about the scenarios? No questions in the chat. Okay. So what about phone service? So this is one of the things that I started getting questions about because if you're canceling your cable bundle, then you don't have your cable phone service anymore. So there are several options. The first option is just to use your cell phone for all your calling purposes. 
Um, there are a few other things if that makes you uncomfortable. And if it makes you uncomfortable, I totally understand. It took me a long time to get rid of my home phone. Um, and even still, sometimes I'm, I consider getting back a phone service. Um, but this, the, the following phone options use the internet or a Wi-Fi connection to place your calls. And the first one is called Umatello. Um, my parents have this and they really love it. It uses Wi-Fi to make calls. So that little box that you see there connects to your Wi-Fi and um, the box connects to the Wi-Fi and then you connect any standard telephone to the box. There's a phone jack on the back of it. And so that you can make your phone calls over the Wi-Fi signal. It can be traced by 911 dispatchers. So when you get it and you set it up, you create a profile within their system so that when you call from the phone, the dispatchers know that you're calling from 123 Main Street and they can send an ambulance if something, you know, if they need to respond quickly. The cost for the device is $100, although coming up, probably you might be able to find it for cheaper, maybe $80 or so. The monthly state fees of about $4.50 for taxes and for the E911 surcharge. You can keep your current telephone number for a one-time charge. And there's also a companion smartphone app. So you can answer your phone at home or on the go on your smartphone. The one thing I will point out about all of these options is they need electricity to run. So if you are using your internet service, you're connecting through the modem and the modem needs ele electricity to run and provide you the internet. So that is one downside for emergency times. This, um, if you don't have a cell phone backup, um, th these are just things to consider. <clears throat> The next option is Vonage. So this one correct, uh, connects directly to the modem rather than over your, your Wi-Fi. You do get that free adapter for your phone, but this one you pay per month. So nine, it's currently $9.99 for six months and after that $26.99 per month. And Magic Jack, you may have seen this as an as seen on TV infomercial, um, but I looked into it and it's actually not that different from the first two. So it connects over the internet. Um, it's $60 or currently $40 for the device and 12 months of service and then $40 annual renewal. So this can connect to either to your laptop or a computer that has internet connection, or now they have a device that can connect directly to your modem. They also have a companion app, so you can answer the same number on your smartphone, just like the UMA does. So the summary of everything we've talked about tonight is cancel all your cable and telephone services, cable TV that is, but keep the internet. Select streaming services, research the options and see which one has the most content that you would enjoy. Purchase a streaming device or use one that you already have. So if you have a smart TV, if you have a gaming console, um, or you can, if not, then you can get a Roku. It's the best all around choice for most newcomers. The Amazon Fire Stick or TV is a good choice if you're already an Amazon Prime customer. Google, Google Chromecast is inexpensive and easy to use. Um, if you have good smartphones, tablets, or laptops, you want to send um, their, what you're streaming to the TV from them. And also you can try an antenna and see how many channels you get. And then lastly, if you do not want to use just your cell phone for calling, you can choose an internet-based phone service. Um, is there any questions about that before I go into my resources? No questions in the chat. Okay. So speedtest.net, this is a great way to check your, your download and upload speeds um, to make sure that you have a robust enough signal to um, <clears throat> stream the content that you want. This is, I did this one at work. You can see I get 741 megabits per second because we're on fiber here at the library. Um, Originally, I had an image from my internet test at home and it was depressing compared to the 741. Um, but it's, it's useful to um, check and see that you're getting exactly what you're paying for. <clears throat> 
This is another one that I love. So um, justwatch.com. So this is a great tool to help you figure out which streaming services you might want to subscribe to. Um, you can see up there, I typed in Outlander in the search bar and it shows me which services is streaming it and where I can buy it. So I know that, um, that I want to stream it on Stars or on Netflix. Um, so that might suggest that I want to subscribe to those. You can type in almost any movie or TV show and it's here. It's a really great resource. And these are further resources that I trust and that I refer to when I'm making decisions about technology um, or big purchases. Clark.com, you might know Clark Howard. He has a regular radio show. He's all about saving money and he's completely un unbiased in the sense that nobody buys his airtime, nobody buys his positive reviews. Um, he's a huge fan of cord cutting and he has lots of great um, information on his website. CNET.com, PCMag.com, Tom'sGuide.com, AntennaWeb.org, which you would definitely want to check out for antennas and uh, further information, and NewYorkTimes.com slash Wirecutter. I really enjoy their reviews of devices. And then Consumer Reports, which is available um, to you through the library with your library card. And of course, the librarians. So um, we do a book of librarian here at the Weathersfield Library um, and the Berlin Peck Library. You can um, write down the phone numbers there if you like and give us a call. I'm sure Newington Library offers a similar service or the Weathers, um, the reference librarians at the desk can certainly assist you. We can't tell you what to buy, but we could certainly help you sift through the information and make sense of, of some of it. So um, please give us a call if you need any help with this or anything else. And that, that is my contact information again at the bottom. My name is Elizabeth uh, E. Morin at weathersfieldlibrary.org is my email address, or you can always call the library, um, the Weathersfield Library to reach us, uh, which is um, 860-529-2665. That is the library's um, phone number. So um, if there's any any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Elizabeth, could you go back or at least um, repeat that on um, the site to check the speed um, somebody is asking? Oh, yep. Speedtest.net. Speedtest.net. other questions in the chat okay <clears throat> so for people saying thank you it was very helpful <laughs> oh good um so i am going to stop my um screen share um and i'm just going to um put a an evaluation in the the chat too if you wouldn't mind um submitting an evaluation. Um, tell, tell me what you thought of this presentation. Did you learn something? Um, did you hate it? <laughs> I, I want to know. Um, and also, I'd love to hear suggestions for any further um, presentations or programs you'd like to see. And we're always trying to come up with um, good ideas for stuff to offer you. Um, I'm putting it in the chat right now that that'll link you to um, a Google form. So I look forward to hearing your responses. So um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I appreciated having you and um, hopefully we'll see you in the library soon. All right. Have a good thank night, you. everybody. Thank you.